So, uh, uh, you know, look forward to doing it again. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I think the village board is aware, and I, there's a merchant here who I know is going to address the board later about uh, some incidents that happened after uh, that, uh, you know, were unfortunate. And I know we're working to try to address this. Certainly, the security cameras that Dennis is highlighting, the more coverage we get on Main Street with the security cameras, uh, the better everybody off is going to be. Because I think when the word is out that uh, you're going to be seen uh, and caught from that bad behavior, we've already seen the effect of the cameras already that it did catch somebody breaking a window uh, at uh, City Swag. You know, we just need to increase that because uh, it's unfortunate a few handful of people could uh, turn what was a really nice celebration into, you know, uh, an unfortunate situation for, for many. So uh, I'm sure the village is very, very, very frustrating. Yes. You go through a great day and you get a couple of knuckleheads that just have no control over themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did talk to the owner of the meatball place, that meatball place, which was very near where the major incident happened. Um, he indicated to me that he thought the problem was, I guess, the Emporium closed their doors at 7, and a lot of people that left were in a, a, a state, uh, and they were actually refused entry uh, into the meatball place, is what he's telling me, uh, and that that's what kind of caused the ruckus outside. Uh, you know, but uh, I know uh, Tracy from uh, Platinum Day Spa, you know, she has some information that might update that as well. Yeah, I know that Jim um, Berber got his book, and I know that uh, Mark also did that in front of his place to the, the Jim Berber public safety and not even spoken to. Yeah, don't leave those balloons up uh, as long as you did. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Tracy Speedy, and I am the owner of Platinum Day Spa. Yes. And as you are all aware, I had a little bit of an incident last night. Tracy, I'm sorry, to but can you just spell for the, for the record your last name? S as in Sam, C A F I T I. Thank you. Um, last night at about 9 o'clock, I received a phone call that I had a hole in my window. When I got there, I had no window at all. Um, police were there, filled out the forms. I then had a cleanup crew come in, clean everything up. Um, this is the second window I've had broken in four months. This time, first time was just a sh shatter, so the glass stayed in place. This time, there was nothing. Glass everywhere. So this time, I have merchandise damage. Um, some display damage and a little bit of wall damage. Second time, um, and it's it's very frustrating and it's very sad yes. that some long-standing event that happens in patch up that's a wonderful thing turns out to be ends up at the end of the evening in, in a shambles. Um, and it's not so much that it's just events that are happening where the after effect is. No, is it's come Thursday and Friday nights also. The drinking that has happened in this past year on Main Street is outrageous. I don't even know how people consume this much liquor. And it's people who have no control over what they drink. And I believe some of these restaurants have no control in stopping when it gets to that limit. So it, I'm seeing the effects of it. And I'm sure other merchants on the block are seeing and, the and effects. And we've, we've talked to them. We've met with the restaurants. I know Mr. Kennedy is Met with the restaurant committee. We'll have to do the restaurant committee again, David. Maybe we bring in some PD to get them on it. Because it, it's got to be put under control. Thursday and Friday nights are a disaster sometimes. I'm almost, sometimes I just close early and I lose business yep. because Understood. the fights and the arguments that I have to have. I happen to have a, a small vestibule before you get to yes, my definitely. door. The things I find in there on the morning. And I did email everyone here today, and I'm sorry for those did, did, not so pretty picture. Did, did Jimmy Berber come by, public safety? I we spoke to him on the phone. I didn't actually. Okay, he's been trying to get by them. Yeah. The the things I find, people relieve themselves in that vestibule. I have to fight with people that they want to stand smoke. They bring glasses of liquor out of the restaurants now. As the police were here last night, one of your public safety officers were outside um, finishing taking a report. Someone came out of the restaurant with a pint glass, threw it in the street right in front of him. Glass broken, somebody could have been standing there. It could be, the situation could be much worse. And as we were sitting there waiting for the cleanup crew to finish, there were multiple fights on the street at that point. It was just a wild, wild night. Because you know what you do is you have, you have a parade like that, they start drinking at noon time, 
I mean, they had nine hours. That's one of the reasons that we moved it to the live after five, the way we moved the live after five to Thursday. Because people would come in and would start drinking at five. Right. And then at 11 o'clock at night, they would go to work the next day. So part of moving it from Thursday, from Friday to Thursday is that people have to go to work the next day. At least they get on what well, makes you a little bit earlier. But I have to say that yeah. I had issues at a live after five this year. That one day I had police uh, yeah, coming to in front of the door. Is, is it, it really is an attempt on our part to kind of move things around. Mm -hmm. It's but, it's the fight, and you can't fight. No. I, sometimes I'm in. I leave some nights alone, and to fight and argue with drunk men and women is a little scary. So, so it's, there's some back. nights I'll just say at six o'clock. That's it. Come Thursday and Friday happy hour, I'm out of here because it's just not worth the safe. It's to, I'm trying to be safe, okay. and it's not safe for my clients also. What's the uh, <clears throat> what's the closest bar to you? Right next door is Meeple's. Yeah, Meeple's on one side and bottom two on the other side. Look at across the street. She's right in the triangle. I'm right in the triangle, and I have to say that it's going to be this year will be five years I'm in business. Uh, the first three and a half years have been fine. I've never had a problem. I've never had an incident. It's this past year yeah, that it really seems everything has exploded. The two, the both now, two glass breakings in four months. Um, incidents every, I have to say, practically every Thursday and Friday night is is a big argument outside my doors. What do you think has changed in that time, from your observation? Um, maybe newer restaurants bringing. I think there's a definitely a much younger, younger crowd who, who they drink. These. I mean, we all. I'm sure you were all young once, and I was young, and we all had our party times. But I've never seen young people drink the way they do today. Yeah. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. They drink until they have no self-control anymore. And the problem is too is that the restaurants keep serving to get that last twenty dollars. David, David, let's get that committee together over the next within the next five days. You know, we'll get a hold. I'll get Jimmy to get a hold of us. Seven PD will we'll bring in. You just gotta stop the question now. You just, yeah. from, from a village perspective, you know, we we can't really impose a drink limit, five drinks, it's not really what we do. We don't have the ability to do that. That's a state liquor authority question. But what the mayor's referencing is the uh, program that these bartenders have to go through in these bars and they have to be responsible for this. If their bartenders are not legally trained <coughs> to recognize that people are being overserved, they, the rest of them, they, they, got, they got responsibility for it. It is. And it, this past year also, we've seen a lot of people leaving the restaurants with actual glasses of liquor. Um, roaming the streets and I, I mean going like five feet past the restaurant and not just by the door. I have people who leave glasses and bottles of full bottles of beer right in front of my door. Mm. So it, it, it is. It's, it's very frustrating on my part. I'm a bit, I wanted my business to be here in Hatchock. I have a very special place yes, called Hatchock. Um, I've worked very hard to make my business successful. And then this kind of takes away from it. So I'm a little bit frustrated and a little bit disappointed. Give, give me the opportunity to do what we can do. David, yeah, we really need to sit down. Who, who's, the, who's the head of that committee? Uh, James Banana. Okay. Get, a hold of, get a hold of James. Let's set something up. And let's set it up here at Village Hall. Absolutely. Put it in here. And, uh, right. We can yep. set it up on your calendar. Yep. Thank you very much for hearing me out. Tracy, very, 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 very upset. I, I, it's none of no one's fault. It's it's just stupid. No, it's the thing about it is, is there's still it is somebody's fault. It is somebody's it's, fault. Yeah. It, 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 I mean here, it's it's you no shouldn't one. have to you shouldn't have to deal with this. This is unfair. I, I, I agree with that. I say that. Every so, Thursday so and you're, Friday you're being very kind by saying it's nobody's fault, but it is somebody's fault, and it's many people's fault. Uh, it's the fault of the restaurants, it's the fault of the people mm -hmm. who go into the restaurants. It's just, you know, I noticed it yesterday as I was walking from uh, the brick house to pick up my car on the east side of Hatcho, so many people were walking around out of outside bars with, with open yeah. containers. Okay. There's a lot of open containers. Okay. It's, it's visibly yeah. And that's the responsibility of the restaurant owners. Nobody should be walking out of those bars with a, with an open container of alcohol, correct? Uh, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. no question. It's, it's a very frustrating for me because my business promotes health and wellness and peaceful, and then to have 
drugs outside my door on two nights a week is... It's not fair. No. Well, I guess the concern also becomes is that it, it puts events like the St. Patrick's Day Parade in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. It puts it in jeopardy. Puts it in jeopardy. That's yeah. correct. If we can't have control of the streets, then, yeah. then we can't have the parade. And that's a shame because that's a wonderful family event that happens. That's, absolutely. It's uh, a more family event. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the Alive After Five. If that thing gets to the point that we can't control it on the street, then it ends. Mm -hmm. you know, so those are the things that we have to look at. Is that what what we can control, you know? I always say we control the things we can't control, and the rest takes care of itself. We have certain parts of this that we have some control over. Some of them is the approvals to have the events themselves. And then the restaurants and the bars have to understand they're making a ton of money. They're printing money. Ching, 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 ching. But they're not going to continue to print that kind of money at the expense of others. And the danger that others get put in, whether it's what happens in front of your place, mm -hmm. or the fact they get in a car and drive away like that. Th that's the other scary part. Yeah, that, and that's, that's, it's just not a simple, simple problem of how, how many police officers do we get on Main Street. It will be one where if you have to drop the hammer and say, hey guys, St. Patrick's Day Parade's been great, a lot of fun, up until three o'clock in the afternoon. But if these restaurants and bars can't control it themselves, they will control it for them. The same thing with the Alive After Fives and the same thing on the Fridays and Saturday nights. And we, I will figure out a way to do that. That's my guarantee. One way or the other, it's going to stop. Thank you very much. Thank you for okay. hearing me. Ms. Miller? Mm -hmm. There's a few mail to say I'm sick, so I'm bad in it. So I'm back to the drinking again. I bet you all think I don't drink. I drink with my dinner every night. I want to go back to um, this young lady said young people are drinking like never before. I want to go back to um, the fact that the bartenders by law are held responsible. Let's just look at that. We've been saying that for a couple of years now and things haven't improved so obviously they're not. Nobody's been sanctioned as far as I know because people have gotten drunk and gone out and broken windows or had fights or the police have been called. There's no incentive. They open, a bar is open to sell alcohol and make a profit. They, you, we know that up front. They're coming in to make their money on alcohol, not on food, on alcohol. That's the way it is. From the point of view of the bartender, you've got a bar full of people. How do you keep track of how much people are drinking, how much one individual person can tolerate? Maybe you can tolerate five drinks. If I have a second drink, I'm drunk. Tom, you know, right? Got drunk in Tom the yard once by accident. And by the way, burned myself in the process trying to make myself a cup of coffee. But my point is, is putting a large burden on the bartenders, where, I mean, this becomes the stock answer. What are we gonna do about all of the drinking that's going on is, oh well, we're gonna, we're gonna kick it down the road to the bartenders. I don't think it's going to work, I don't think it's fair, by the way, and I don't think it's going to work. Well, I didn't say that to kick it down the road to the bartenders. You've got to be with, the, with the, the, the owners of the, the establishments. Those are the people that, that where the responsibility lies. They're the ones that train the bartenders, hire the bartenders, hire the, the, the security. They're the ones that ultimately make that final dollar. So that it's not kicking it down the road to the bartenders. It's really saying to the, to the, the owners that I we have to say that the owner will be sanctioned or fined. Right, that I understand. The owner is not behind the bar generally making, oh, oh he's drinking, oh, she, how much is that one drinking? Oh, what is that one doing? How do you do that? But, uh, you they know, do it. They, they, have, to, they have to do it. They have to, they have to come up with a way to do that. Yep. You know, so well, like they I- They haven't yet, that's the but, point. But then they're gonna be held accountable. But then, then we have to come up with the sanctions. 
And we all speak to this up down to PD. You know what? We're not coming up with just one no. thing. We're not coming up with the sanctions. No. We're going to encourage the liquor authority to go into sanctions. And I just want to be clear on like you know what the obligations are. From the village, from a legal perspective, the bartenders are absolutely responsible because they're the employee of that place. The ultimate person who actually would get the ticket for the disorderly premise is the manager. The manager gets the ticket personally. And we've had it where the manager is answerable in the district court because they're personally responsible. It doesn't go in the company's name. It's the manager who's on duty at the place who gets the disorderly premises ticket. I understand that, and I'm questioning how realistic and how fair is that. But that's beside the point. My question is, has it worked over the past two or three years? We just heard that things are getting worse, not better. So has it worked? And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say one more thing. Jack, you have two kids coming up. Trustee Felice, you have kids coming up. Tom, you have a grandson coming up. Think about it. Think about it. So, you know, I, I don't want to feel, you know, that we're kicking it down the curve. That's what was suggested. We were kicking it down the curve. We're kicking it down to the, the bartenders. No, I know the law says that it yeah. goes to them. I understand right. that. This is, this, is, this is straight from the SLA website. What can I do about a noisy or rowdy bar? For immediate assistance, contact your local police department, sheriff's office, or the state police. And here would be the Suffolk County Police Department. You can also file a complaint with the SLA by telephone, written complaint, email, or personal visit to the nearest SLA zone office. Albany, Buffalo, New York, obviously you want to make the call or email it. You should make a written record of the date, time, and nature of disorder documenting specific problems with the licensed premise. And what the goal is to get a quantum of evidence so that when there is a disorderly premise that is taken seriously by the SLA and the consequence is fatal, you said, Look at, they don't make the money off the food, they make the money off the liquor, the alcohol. You lose that liquor permit, your business is going down. You're in tough shape. So my advice is, if, you, if there is enough of a quantum of evidence on a, on a location that will designate this place and have the SLA take action on a disorderly premise, we can't revoke liquor licenses, the SLA can. So our advice would be to certainly do that Call the police, register your complaint with the SLA. If you've seen an uptick in certain incidents and you know where it's coming from and those kind of things are happening, I urge you to go and do something. You know, that's certainly first step. We're gonna have the meeting and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get a hold of the governor's office to uh, address that as well. I think that they would be uh, amenable to talk to the SLA on our behalf. Any other comments? Speak. 